and <clears throat> here we go. It's Saturday, the 3rd of November, 1, 9, 1, 9, 2018, I think. I'm, I might be a little behind. Uh, but this is Flash at the Dork Table on a set, another Saturday. To me, it's a Saturday early evening. But if you're listening in the States, it's a little bit earlier, you lucky people. I already had my day come and go. So we just stalling just enough to type this in and not forget to do it later. Wait, 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 wait. I did it wrong. Uh, what a mess. Okay. And then, yeah, zero three. Okay, so uh, we're flying solo these days on the dork table. But Mary remembered to mention it, so I'm sure everybody out there that does the dork table already does the dork table so we already know where we're at i guess you might need instructions if you want to listen from a new platform but if you don't we're over here at real liberty media.com that's home and we go to the chat and harass each other about the price of beans in venezuela and we're going to say hey to barman grimner miss kate chow sedoni chow sedoni again my wife, well, who she's not feeling good today, so she's logged on, but she's uh, she's not up and about quite yet. And we got Miss Chloe, Cyborg, Noodle, Echelon, me, Grammy. Grammy's not here. Don't tell me Grammy's here. Uh, I B Don C, Pox Five, Pox Phone, Pone Sauce, Rain, Ireland Fluke, Rome Skittle, Vinny Anomalous, Hey Vinny, uh, Phantom. The Phantom's always lurking. Asmo 2, Colfax 101. Dakota, Dork Cakes, a hey, mental what's up. Uh, Frumpy, Gromit, Java Doctor 2, Hansel, Jays, Nines, and Jays, Kozu, mm -hmm. uh, Sock Puppet, and Donna Van Meter just at the last name on the list there. Hey, Donna. So today. We're going to go crazy at the dork table, destroying everybody's notion of a future invasion from the South and what Central American people. Hey, Vinny, uh, I don't I don't think it's real, but apparently everybody else does. So we're just going to have to let this little game play out on the chessboard of life. But sure looks like a. Uh, a guy with you know eighty billion dollars could find something more interesting to do than uh, finance an invasion, but the whole thing doesn't make any sense any other way. I mean, thousands of people don't just wake up all at one time and decide, "Hey, I'm moving to California," without thinking it through. I mean, I would assume even even I thought through coming to Denmark. I mean, but that was to visit. The stand, the stand here was easy, but the initial, you know, to get me to go from Scotland to Denmark was, eh, it wasn't that hard of a thing. It was just, it wasn't the first idea I had, so I, I find this whole thing a little bit strange, but what don't I find strange? Hey, barman's giving me beans. Hey, because I'm half, only half. And it's probably not even half because my father was a mixed bread down from some other shit too. He had other, you know, other bloodlines running through his veins. Because Mexican folks don't have red hair. And, and he was a ginger. And he had a ginger brother that was older than him. So there was probably something in the fucking water they were drinking way back in the day that, you know, made their hair red. Ah, look at this. Everybody's saying hi to each other in the love chat of the reallibertymedia.com. And I'm sitting over here rooting on an invasion to uh, come and inf infiltrate the borders of uh, my ex-homeland. But I don't, I don't see it happening. Hey, honey. Mm. My wife managed to get up off the couch. She's got a little bit of a cold today, so she's not feeling all that well. Huh, honey? Yeah, right. Just sit there and be quiet. <laughs> I got the radio program. Anyway, so we're we're being invaded, and 
not we, but you know, the the internet world is. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's like uh, everything that a TV can't do, your computer can do. So, and with the computer, for all this instant information that we seem to have achieved, we kind of overlook the stuff that should be obvious and you know, done right in front of everybody, but it's not. <laughs> like banking and politics and religion, but no, 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 no. All those secret societies got secret rules and, you know, you have to join their club to, to be a member to find out what it is they do. And then once you do that, then you're done. You're one of them. Ah, no, my father was um, not Carlos Murphy. He was actually had a um, a misspelled Spanish last name. But when my grandfather bought the property up in Central, they were from Central California, the last name got spelled wrong by somebody that either wasn't too familiar with Spanish folk or did it as a fucking joke and it stayed and they misspelled our last name so there you have that My but my mom was she wasn't Mexican she was only Mexican by penetration and outside of that she had geez her family bloodline goes back to Russia from what I understood from my grandma when she was around, but I never got to talk to the grandma before her. She was, um, I wonder, I don't know. I don't remember being old enough to ask. And when I did ask, uh, I don't think anybody knew exactly what to tell me. So they said, we're not sure, <laughs> but that's, you know, when you travel 6,000 miles from home, that shit happens. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe the, uh, the dork table should invade something. Have we got any invaders in the dork table today that on the RLM chat that want to reverse, uh, it, what do you call it? Reverse invade Mexico. <laughs> Just flood the fucking border. Like 50 million Americans and go to Mexico. <laughs> See how they like it. <laughs> but I'm, I'm probably just making a bad joke. Ha, ha, ha. But I'll bet you there's some border lovers out here in the reallibertymedia.com chat that want to arm up and go down there and kill them some baners. Because those baners are going to come over and take their jibs. <laughs> just like on South Park. <laughs> so, I don't know. I think it's insane. Borders. The whole idea is just, you know, to make a few bucks and keep us all in line. Like, uh, what was I listening? I was listening to uh, somebody else talking about school, you know. I think it was Mary. <laughs> Mary was doing a, a school link on her show. And I believe all that, you know. We're stifled and shoved in by All you got to do to prove it is just deny that the planet is round. And you don't have to say anything else. You can just sit there and read for a half hour. Listen to other people tell you how ignorant you are because you ask a question. How do you prove that this round thing is true? Period. No, look around you. No, 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 no. All the evidence shows. Well, no, not really. Not when you think about what, what one person calls evidence. Somebody else might consider it a, a bullshit story. You never know. I I don't trust everything I read or hear or see, for that fact. Sometimes my eyes deceive me. Like I have this really incredible skill for this very technical uh, shit with colors on these puzzles I do. I can't understand how I do it because can't see worth the shit. Then the box never looks like the picture, you know, the puzzle pieces. You know, and with the the wonders of modern science, they've figured out ways to mix these colors so so uh, roughly that your eye doesn't really recognize there's a difference. So it takes a, I don't know, special interest in that kind of shit. And 
as blind as I am, I go over there and sit down, pick up a piece, and go to the part of the puzzle where it goes and goes right in. So I'm bragging about my dork skills on the Dork Table Podcast. You're welcome. Because I'm sure that you dorky people have skills that you don't. You don't brag about it because other people wouldn't see the um, the artistic side of what it is you're thinking that you're doing. Drawing usually uh, brought me a better response, I suppose. Or you could see a drawing. You can see me sit down with a blank piece of paper, and you know whatever came of that would be witnessed. Now the other stuff, you know, stuff that takes long amounts of time. People that don't want to sit around and watch you work, so it's it's a different thing, I think. But the end result's still the same: make something and sell it, or give it away, or what have you. And people start to ask for what you're doing. It's like Goober. Goober would probably do himself a, a world of good if you just go out there and find a few people that got money, and instead of trying to sell it to him, give it to him. They'll come back looking, and if they don't, then you know you're fucked. Because you already know one thing about a guy with money. He doesn't know how to say no. Only poor people know how to say no. Only poor people in this life have to ever say no, because that's the nature of money. I don't really think I want any of that, though. I mean, it's kind of pretty to... To see a, a like a Cadillac car from the day, or you know, a nice uh, see the wife dressed in expensive clothes and all that crap, but it doesn't last very long. So I I spend more time thinking about aesthetics and in terms of long lasting things like a piece of artwork. I even go to, for other people's art sculptures. I can't sculpt to save my ass. I'd probably lose a few fingers just trying to learn the basics of whatever it takes to be able to sculpt, like, out of wood. And I had a friend that could do that. He could sculpt wood, and he could draw. Amazing characters I've met in my day. And speaking of that, here I am all these years down the road, and I'm surrounded by um, the same basic uh, mentality that I got of, of people in both genders. There's no gender split on the RLM. If you put a gender split on the RLM, it's because that's what you think. It's not representing anybody else's opinion that I can see. I see a place where we're all pretty much equal, you know. And as far as the smart ones, if anything, the women are, are quicker at, like, the uh, trivia game. They're faster. They got us outnumbered two to one because Grimm's the only one that can beat them steadily. So, I don't know. I don't think one, one gender is smarter than the other. I just think that we have different talents. You know, like what Cirk can't do, I do well. You know, what I can't do at all, Cirk can do. Or what I do want, can, or what I can do, but prefer not to because I don't care to do it. Like cooking. Yeah could take it or leave it you know if i was uh, living alone i don't think i'd take cooking any more seriously than i than i do being married put it all on the poor wife except when she's sick and then i i make soup and it's soup in a bag i, I thought it was a joke i always had canned soup because i was american once and then i moved here to denmark and a couple about a year or two back she says i want you to get me a a, a bag of soup and I thought, okay, you're, you're joking. And no, oh, it turns out they've modern technology had passed me up in the states, and I wasn't in, involved in the food purchasing, so I didn't see all these things change. You know, canned soup went to bag frozen soup, and I don't know if I'm risking my balls eating that stuff. It doesn't say or, or you know organic on the packaging, so. <laughs> But I know, you know, that's what I mean about the packaging here. If it doesn't say something, then then you're taking your chances. And that's the point. You don't have to wonder if it's not good for you. It's not telling you it's good for you. It's telling you it's bad for you. <clears throat> and it breaks all those uh, imaginary barriers we all got with language. You, know, you think being somewhere where you can't speak the language would be a big hindrance. But it's truly not. People pay a lot of attention 
to what they're doing and, and spend a lot less time talking to you than you think. I mean, you might be out there talking a lot more than me, at least, because you know, I can go into the grocery store and not have to engage anybody in the store until I get to the e exit. And then all the kid at the register ever does is tell me how much it's going to cost and ask me if I want a receipt. That's their job. They are by, you know, qualifications of their work require that. And I'm always nice to them at the end. I don't, you know, treat it like a chore to have to speak to these kids. I, you know, I'm just nice back to them. And every time I go, I've been going for four years to the same grocery and other places. But I, I spend a lot of time picking out, you know, like today I wanted to get some lemons I needed a list, but, you know, Cirque's got a little cold coming on. And you know how people are. I'll sit here. I got my bottle of vitamin C, and she'll see, sit, sit here and watch me take 10 of these. Tell her, I got a tickle in my throat. I don't feel so good. And I sat down, and I put a big stack of vitamin C tablets and sucked up the orange juice and all that shit. And in a day or so, I felt better instead of being ill for three days and then you know the end of that and she did give me a big fuck you in case you didn't hear it because i'm i'm ragging on her about being ill but we all know that the person that's ill is the lousy patient you, you can't be a good patient that's why they call it being ill you're going to be the opposite of what you normally are is what comes out of you when you're sick i think because i'm reasonable but if i was ever sick i don't think i'm reasonable anymore i was pausing for a sip of my delicious elixir in fact i think i'm going to shoot it now i'll be right back hold on to that thought ah thank you folks had to keep the pipes wet boy i'll tell you sometimes some um, Common sense just evades me, and I forget to keep something to drink close to the microphone because I'm doing this crap alone now, and I can't just say, "Hey, t hold on," it's, you know, cover the thing for two minutes. Well, I've done that on accident, but but not on purpose. I I'm working on it. Oh, Vinny still wants to play games about my um, the countries that claim my paperwork, because that's all that shit is. You know, is the people. Don't, that's amongst us. That's that's just a bunch of shit, really. I was talking to David down at the grocery today about it, and he knows what I know pretty much. And now it's nice here, and we get along, and that's pretty much the best you can expect from people, right? So we're gonna open up the internet and see what's going on in the world, right? And what they tell you is the worst negative, fucked up horse shit that you can possibly find. Everything in in uh, the news is made up and bogus moon, moon landings. These people are so arrogant that they went out of their way. I mean, they had to know someday in the future they were going to be exposed. If you look back at all, all the evidence shows you it was a big performance by a few people right then the guy that it breaks that all down on this link and then he explains it by you know saying the person that was involved in it that believed it didn't wasn't lying about anything they believed it that was wasn't their job it was just part of the way that the whole game played out and cognitive dissonance really does exist because if you're the guy that's telling other people, nah, what you're seeing is a bunch of shit, well, then you're me or some of the folks on the RLM. And uh, it's not a pretty thing. It's really unattractive. Mm -hmm. This is why I prefer to keep my political business, except for in the bar. I don't, I don't care about the bar. That's different. But as far as, you know, associating with people that I'm not going to run into in the bar in the first place, some things are just in society just left left alone. I think that's the lesson I've learned here is it's a whole lot easier to smile politely and just get along 
than it is to have a bunch of assholes run it for you and bring the thugs in to organize and keep you all under you know control here the society pretty much does that by itself because there's just not when it's where it's not populated very much there's just not a lot for the for the bad guys to do i don't see the i don't see the point in it everybody's house is in the open here so burglary wouldn't be a good that would be a terrible idea because the neighborhood it's that's how it operates is people watch everything else but their own shit <laughs> that's what we do for each other it's 420 somewhere flash yeah here you know what i will indulge you mr vincent i will put a little stoke in my pipe here and then i will light my fire all by myself <clears throat> So I'm reading, uh, reading. I'm wa listening to links when I when I do my puzzle. So I found this character. I'm gonna open up YouTube and see what his damn name is. And he's talking about the uh, the fraud of NASA, basically, and other things. And I have to get the link to remember what the other thing was, because well, that's the way I roll. <laughs> I suppose. Stalin for time here. Let me open up my history and see how far back it goes. Because it was only yesterday. But I do use a lot of... Um, YouTube crap is still entertaining the shit out of me. I must be older than the rest of you. So, what's his name? Because I watched a couple of movies. Do, 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 do. So, here we Oh, Shali Lama's on here. Oh, uh, don't tell me it didn't record what I wanted it to record. Um, hmm. Well, I guess not. Anyway, it'll pop up somewhere or it won't. But he's uh, done a lot of these YouTube links, so he got a lot of exposure over the years. And I keep saying to people, boy, if, you, if you're doing anything on the Internet at all and you think you're attracting a crowd, you're probably insane. Because unless you go through the system, there's no way to gather a crowd. You're a lot smaller than you think. You're very insignificant in the interwebs world. I feel that way. Maybe some of you guys think you're like superior and you get better stuff and better deals. <laughs> and I think that, you know, you spend money and one company treats you the way of accordingly to how much money you spend. That's what I've learned. We ain't, we're not living in the perfect world we talk about on Tuesday. No, this is the dark table well, where shit goes wrong on purpose because that's the way they wanted it. And we've been arguing that for so many years. Uh, I can't, can't even count them now. Well, I can count mine. But as far as other people, I don't know. Some people like Cakes and Kate and who's here? Grimner, Vinny, and... Hey, I got a few people to hang around in the RLM chat. These people know what's going on, you know, in the world at large. And Vinny's told stories on the on the radio with me about uh, challenging the cashiers and asking them if they would accept a Federal Reserve note in, instead of the cash. <laughs> because it's the same damn thing. That, But they don't know that. I saw videos of this guy. What's his name? Mark Dice. <laughs> trying to try. And I know how people are on the street. They're timid and scared, right? And here's this big gorilla with a, you know, intimidating size to him. And he's trying to sell you a coin. Of course you're going to say no. Why would you buy it? <laughs> you'd have to be, you'd have to be a little gutsy to, to do something like that. And I think the way he did the video, he was picking on people that would shy from it just by looking at him. The guy knows. He's been doing what he does for a while. On, so you, you, you get good at your craft, whatever your craft is. And I think the, the bulk of people on the internet or entertainment or looking for followings and all that horseshit, oh, please donate to me at the end of their shows. and I need the money because I'm, you know, I'm important and I'm telling you what I think. So send me money, 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 money. 
I don't know. Once a year is enough. I, I don't see anything wrong with it, like, annually. But when it's every damn show, <laughs> then at that point, I just think it's kind of a, a joke. It's not real anymore. Of course, I don't believe the money's real either, because if you think about it, we're all living on debt promissory notes and that's really the nature of the damn game any fucking way you give them a check or a put something on a credit account of some kind or another and somebody does some accounting and the next thing you know you're they're asking you for more so i think it's a really a negative way to run humanity it works against almost all of us and it only benefits select few and the masses will not for the world give that up they prove it every time they vote they prove it every time they renew their driver's licenses <laughs> and uh i've heard it well you can't yeah i did though see i took the risk and because my skills and luck outweighed theirs Nothing ever became of it. No accidents, no stops, no nothing. And drove for <laughs> about 20 odd years. I don't know, close to 20 years, something like that. On and off. You know, I never made a habit of doing anything really. <laughs> I changed lifestyles for, you know, a year here. I'd go to another country and see what was going to happen there. <laughs> and eventually I ended up growing up and meeting Cirque. And now I live in Denmark. Because I'm from Los Angeles. I grew up in swimming pools. You know, swimming on the city. Uh, the city had a swim team. And I wasn't real big size. So my, my dad decided I'd probably be better off in a swimming pool than I would be on a football field. And he was right. I agree with it now completely. But when I was little, I, I, didn't, I didn't understand it. But what swimming did was it kept me freaking healthy. I, I rode a bicycle too, till I was about I don't know, fourteen. I'd I'd given it up. That that was occasionally I would ride my bike, but usually I just hitchhike. And then at at fifteen I was conning my way into cars. And at sixteen I was legal, had the license and all that shit, so I couldn't be stopped. I was a force to be reckoned with, and I did it. You know, did it for a, a long time. I did it legally. I did it illegally. And either side of that coin, I never got into uh, any kind of accidents. But the the police did enjoy pulling me over for speeding a few times when I was about 16 till I was, uh, I don't know, maybe 18. And uh, me, I just said, yeah, 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 give me the ticket. And sure as fuck. Burn it, something, roll something in it. Who knows what I did with the original ticket. But in 1982, that accumulated, and I had like four of them. And something in life required me to, to reinstate my driver's license. So I did, and I had to go to, to jail for, how long was that? I think it was a, um, I think it was a 30-day total. I had to do two weeks in Orange County because I was got two tickets down there, and they had two in L.A. And so I had to do another two weeks in L.A. And it was really terrible, kind of. I'm in there with this guy, this older guy. He's in there for a warrant for not walking his dog. So this is the kind of threat I pose to society as a teenager. That I was so threatening, they put me in with the guy that, was in there for a license thing, and his, he was like 60 years old. <laughs> so uh, that was, I mean, when they did, the system did manage to punish me. They didn't, thanks, sweetie. They didn't really do a very good job of punishing me. I mean, it, it looks bad on paper to, to people that vote and, you know, require all this police intervention into our lives because... You know, we're a bunch of savages. Fuck. I was speeding and I uh, stopped for the cops and did all that shit. But I wasn't interested in going to their court. And at the time, I remember, I was well aware that, oh yeah, they're going to want a fine or time. 
and at the time the the warrants were worth about 30 days so i took the 30 days and i even got time off of la for some i don't know it was it's just a business it doesn't have anything to do at that kind of level of shit it's got nothing to do with you're a threat to society you didn't pay a ticket please all that is is somebody that's led prone to be laid on their bills <laughs> i don't know i don't consider um, being fined by a, the state i don't think it's right why do they have the right to do that and where did the money go you know if because it cost the state money to pay for my time that i was in jail they would have been better off if they just let me walk away from the whole thing period but the state gets money from the Fed or something for every body they have in a jail cell for ever for every 24 hours period that you're there. <clears throat> I think All right, they did at the time. Maybe the things have shifted since those days. But anyway, so I I guess I learned at an early age to expect the that the system was, it wasn't about us. It wasn't about us having anything or not having anything. It was about them having their cut of everything. Hmm. And I still have yet to find anybody that can give me a compelling argument that will show me the error in my judgment of this situation. Uh, let's see, Grimner says, Oh, Flash was just talking how he got stuck in jail for 30 days. Oh, you're ta talking, okay. Yeah, um. What do you want? Oh, yeah. Sorry, dear. I my wife needed something, and I couldn't understand her hand signals. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've had a, a very dull, uneventful life. That's what I mean. I turned myself in for that thirty days. That's how bad of a guy I was. The cops never bothered with me. I was just not interesting to them at after a certain age. I don't know, something shifted. No, yeah, it was just speeding tickets. It wasn't anything bad, please. If you're if you're so indoctrinated in the state that you think a speeding ticket is a crime, wow. <laughs> no, that's that that's nothing. And if you looked up the original explanation for speeding in, in by the law, it ended in a uh, traffic accident. So according to the law it's, itself, I'm I never did anything. But they just upgrade the codes so that it'll include shit that it didn't have to do with in the first place. Because how fast or slow you go in the car has nothing to do with the accident itself most of the time. Accidents happen when two people won't yield. That's all that is. That's people being greedy and not wanting to give the other guy the benefit of the doubt or whatever the fuck it is at the moment. And they take the same place. Boom. It's called friction. There you go. When two objects try to occupy the exact same place and time at the same moment, you get friction. And where there's heat, baby, guess what? You're either in a kitchen or maybe something's on fire. You need to check shit out. Yeah, excessive heat is not a good thing. We, The things that we get taught to look for in life are uh, hmm. compared to the truth I found as as a grown up I think the shit that the adults in my day were leading me to were garbage law uh, you could have been a great lawyer out there. but what I've learned about what the law is since I decided way back then I didn't really want to do it anyway it's been very disappointing the Bar Association, you know, and here we are, you know, we're all just like stuck in this, in this game, right? And I don't see everybody in the RLM playing this, this um, society game where, oh, I think this should happen to you 5,000 miles away because my voice counts. Well, your voice might count, but what about the information you're getting fed to make a choice about somebody else's life. <laughs> you know, it's mean we're we're all so easily sucked into these dramas that we can't see. You can't prove or disprove them because geez, you can do anything with a computer and a camera now. Um 
I don't know. We're, we've outsmarted ourselves into thinking that everybody is like this and everybody ain't like this. whatever this is that we're sharing on the internet is unique and we're, we're different than the other people. And then some people go beyond this level and they want to get implants and Hey, I want to be hooked up to the internet. <laughs> I've heard and read some of the strangest shit. And you don't know if it's true or not. Is it somebody just telling you this is what the public wants? How would you know what the public wants? I don't get it. I don't think people just wake up and decide, you know what? Well, sir, tomorrow I'm going to go to Sweden. I'm going to get injected with an implant. And I th I'm thinking about a sex change. I want to be a cat. No, <laughs> just don't see that shit. <laughs> it's cannon fodder for my jokes, for crying out loud. And But if I read the internet, <laughs> there's people that really want to do the shit that I make fun of doing. And that's never changed. That's why I'm on the dork table. I tease the I tease the cool kids because they thought they were cool and I thought they were ridiculous. <laughs> so where where would you be without your friends to tell you how cool you are? are you still cool alone? <laughs> I am. I'm so fucking cool. People can't get near me cuz they get a shiver. <laughs> huh, honey. I suck the body heat right out of my wife when she comes near me. It's I tell her it's a Jew thing. She I can't teach it to her. You know? Yeah, flash and easily. What's up, Vincent? Here, let me read a little bit of the chat aloud and sanitized toilet and vacuum carpet moved my sunblock. Pad from seat across from me that was taken out for computer shit to a better spot now that I not so fucking hot. That was Woody. Go Woody. Woody's becoming like a Felix Unger. He's the Felix Unger of the desert world. And he's out there getting his uh, real estate situation sorted. I don't didn't want to say license. It may, eh. But I don't know. Maybe that's what you want to hear. However you do it. But it, it did encourage me to, to get a hold of my old friend Jen. And uh, I give her a call as beginning of the week and talk to her for a few minutes so we're gonna make arrangements to have a, a little bit more time where we can both sit down and chit chat and catch up and oddly enough i've told this story because it's a favorite story though it, i helped a girl get uh books to get a real estate license and the girl that got the book said told my friend jen I don't want the books. I changed my mind. I want to do something different. Well, then Jen said, hey, I want to do that. And she actually did. And she's been doing it ever since. Uh, and I knew her. She had a, a two-year-old daughter named Gloria. And that was seven years ago. So she's successful at her task. And this is what I was saying to Woody is, you know, it doesn't mean I'm going to introduce you to Jen and you're going to become uh, – good at your at the craft but what it means is there's a network of people and we all know somebody everybody knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody it's not about having 150 friends what i'd like to have is 150 sites that i could go to and be recognized at at each of those sites that would be kind of cool but i'm not real popular with the um with the chat world you know Always draw hands. I don't know. I could talk about anything. And hands will come in and tell everybody how dumb I am. <laughs> then I have to go lick my wounds and play some video game. Because I don't really want to waste waste my time. You know, ch tying up the room with me and his banner. I'm tired of it. So I do it on the radio now. Mm. Mm. My wife may even makes a better cup of tea than I do. <laughs> I think it's just that mind thing. You know, when somebody does something for you, it's always better from when they do it than when you do it yourself. Cause we play the tea game. And she said, oh, do we, are we making tea? Which means she wants some, and she's hoping she hit me in a mood when I do. And sometimes I don't. I, I just go, no, I just go slam around a bunch of shit, make a quick cup of tea, bring it out to her. And there you go, go back to what I was doing. 
but I'm still not the sweetest, nicest guy. But I do the, you know, I do the things that um, are important to me to be done. And I think about it, if all the times that she'll make coffee and shit, she does it, but she's doing it for herself already. So I'm just like the passenger. <laughs> I could justify that, but uh, only the first cup. Then the second cup is a matter of she might not want a second cup. So <laughs> if I do, I, I, you know, you got to work with your partner in their little idiosyncrasies. And other, some people don't think about this kind of shit. They don't think it's important or they don't care or whatever it is. But the things that uh, help me get along with people that I get along with the most isn't always being just like them. Because, you know, oh, we're looking for our own kind around here, motherfucker. You know, that kind of shit. I, Vinny says, Flash is on the run. Uh-oh. Whoa. We could make commercials. Yeah, I bet. You're, you probably could. I don't know. You could do anything you want to in this life. It's just, it's just that simple. Some people just prefer to use the established order system to acquire and trade. And I didn't. I, I went around the corner. I run around the system constantly for many years. So, I don't know. I guess technically they think it's some kind of a law that was broken. But I never asked for their, um, their tax for shit. So, I never signed any of it. So, it never applied to me. And I found that out when I was way done with the whole damn thing. And then I went, really? And then there's proof. There's even so much proof that there's no no federal income tax law that's in writing. It's just a story. We're getting screwed with it. You get screwed by applying to do it. That's how they trap you. And you're, they trap you with implied consent through your signature. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's such a brilliant scam, I mean. I'm so, um, the bad guy in me is envious of the United States government. Those fuckers know how to pick a pigeon, let me tell you. And we line up in groups and beg them, in order to, you get in line. I did it for my passport. I hated every fucking moment of going through that post office and dealing with these state people because they're just like, they hate their jobs, so they hate you. <laughs> It's just, it's like misery a la mode with a side of shit. <laughs> but I did it because I wanted to acquire something. So, there you go. And in my opinion, that is me being a slave to the man. Because the whole thing's just ridiculous, you know. Why couldn't I just make my own accommodations? Hey, I'll go get a, a boat in Boston and jump on board as a crew and maybe a yacht who knew you know but you can't you can't do these things unless of course you're alone and I wasn't at the time but still I mean instead of going through all this the, what society expects me to do I've done other shit and found a lot of fun not breaking the law just not going with the uh, just to the extremes, like you can't board a boat without a passport. I didn't know that, but I had a passport. So finding out was no big deal. But <clears throat> the funny thing about it is, of all the people I'd ever met in my whole life, until I met up with these people boating, I didn't really understand how important that passport truly was. Because... If you get stopped by the whatever kind of Coast Guard or whatever they have out in the ocean and you don't have your ID, they take you bye bye away. Oh, and that's whatever country you're, you know, waters you're in, I guess, is where you're going. And then before we had that's before we had all this Internet shit back in the 90s. And I was traveling around with just the, the paper in my pocket. And if you couldn't prove who you were, you were in serious shit wherever you were at so some part of me that's even as rebellious as I want to be I've always managed to stay ahead of the man so to speak by keeping the documents good 
And not only that, but the best of the best document you can get. Nobody ever argued. Oh, one person argued with my p passport in a uh, electric office in Los Angeles trying to get a, or it might have been the Valley, or maybe at the time it was LA because it was, uh, anyway, it was a electrical thing. They wanted to deposit and all this crap and ID. So I gave him the money and but then i gave him my passport and the girl had a heart attack at the, oh wait a minute let me go get my supervisor this is an id and I, oh, and I said nah just go do that anyway the girl comes back her supervisor's schooling her on passports and the next thing the everybody's all calmed down and we're back to normal but i'm thinking of uh i'm not not planning to come back to the states so i don't know maybe i'll become a danish citizen what would that what would that prove hmm? 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 Nah, i think i'll still continue being a guest uh, that'll work for me uh, but being married to sir hmm. but see if, if we yeah but if we hadn't gone through the state legal shit then the living situation would be i would be a uh a liability no 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 we don't do those things according to some people on the chitter chatter box i do but nah, that's a bunch of crap it's kind of sad too that you uh, take personal shit like that that far with other people but it's your style of sport so you know type as fast as you can you're gonna need it <laughs> what do we got going on oh uh, Mr. Pancakes is posting music while I'm doing live radio. I don't know what to make of you. <laughs> hmm. But that's that's pancakes for you. That's why we call him mental. Because you got to be a little out there in the first place to think so much of pancakes. I mean, there's better things than pancakes. Like... Oh, yeah, there are. There, I can th think of three things that are better than pancakes right off the top of my head. Good sex, comfortable shoes, and a warm place to go to the take a shit. But, huh? No, no, no. Heroin. <laughs> I thought I was going to use heroin as a better than pancakes. No, no, no. But I'll tell you what. If you shot an armload of pancakes, you ain't going to get high. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to get, but it's not going to end well for you. I don't know how we got on this talking about drugs. My wife is sick over there on the couch. She's high on vitamin C and she's talking crazy. <laughs> high on vitamin C. Yeah. Well, Beetle's having a rough time today. Oh, oh he's playing around with... Um, Grimner about the the song that Dork Cakes put up. Wow, you guys are crazy today. Grow up, you bunch of teenagers. Why don't you guys go clean your rooms or something? I mean, come on. Mm. I don't know what multiple multiples, except if it's a typo and you're saying multiples. Then I get it, Vinny, but sometimes. I hope you get your computer thing sorted out, too. Then you can come on here onto the real liberty media dot com radio podcast and participate. <laughs> How many ears you got? <laughs> Beetle is funny. Heroin on pancakes. Yeah, there you go. Mm. I bet that would solve the world's problems right there. Just serve all the people that eat pancakes. Just put heroin on their pancakes. See what happens. Experiment with life just a little bit. <clears throat> Don't syrup the Ron. Hmm. Vinny is talking in code. Mm. The wife is ill, so I'm staying. I'm staying away from her for right now. She's got a little cough going on, but I don't know. Ah, sweetie, you get a live. Oh, and Cirque's got a birthday coming up next week ah, 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 ah. now nah, she's a grown-up like the rest of us <laughs> she can't call me old anymore i will not ha i will take it not 
<laughs> She'll call me ancient. Uh, oh, I'm not posting pictures of my wife for you, Beetle. You think I'm some kind of um, Hansel? Mm. Well, I was enjoying a swig of my wife's elixir. Mm. Oh, good. Cool. Well, that's even... Vinny's got cool shit going on, and Woody's got his snake drying. That's going to be interesting. Are you going to make anything out, out of it, or are you just going to keep it as a souvenir? Well, doesn't matter. Yeah, but still, eating roadkill meat might be kind of hazardous to your health. I don't know. I'm not a prepper. Don't care for all that prep and shit. Fuck it. Man, we're going to go up in nuclear any damn way. There won't be nothing to save. There ain't going to be nothing that you can use that's going to be safe in the first place. The whole, nah, nah, we're doomed. Okay, now that I've settled all that. <laughs> I, I mean, I know the rest of you guys want to go all slow, fight one country off at a time. But you're running out of countries to invade. So the next stage of this fucking nightmare has got to be nuclear somewhere. And being is where I'm at seems to be like the center of the fucking problem where all these dumbasses group up. Well, no, you got your own in England. You got one in New York City. Hmm. Nah, this is bigger than I think, probably. I'm not even capable of having a disgusting thought that's so bad it would explain how bad the shit government is doing to us truly is. Because I'm just not that evil. <laughs> but I'll bet you guys could give it a try if you want to. <laughs> Tell me what's wrong with this planet and why we're getting along so badly that uh, the police government's got to go around bombing the other people. I, I, and I don't get that. Then they make it unlivable, and then all the people they just bombed want them to take them in. <laughs> it's been going on for a long time. And, and now <laughs> and now you've got a group. <laughs> they claimed 7,000 and growing. Now, here here's the funny part. is you got to tell me 7,000 people are, are consuming every fucking morsel of shit there is along the the road that they're on to get where they're going <laughs> that's a an army travels on its stomach so there you go <laughs> yeah and they're they're traveling they're walking <laughs> okay <coughs> whoa thanks Vinny. that's what i needed some fresh roadkill hmm. no what i need is a, um i need a history lesson to understand completely why. Why would people that live thousands of miles away, why would they all just wake up one day and go, I'm going to north all at the same time? I find it quite coincidental. I don't think you can organize a thing like that without money. Money, 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 money. Because those people going to eat. I wonder what else they're going to need. Toiletries. What other daily necessities do we have besides eating and staying clean? Uh, crap. There's not much else. But I bet you they got cell phones so they can talk to Panama. <laughs> I, I don't know. I can't figure this out. I think it's a joke. And then I t well, maybe they're doing it. I mean, Soros has a lot of money. You can do a lot of stuff with that kind of money. But he never does anything, and the only time he's doing anything with it is when he's promoting some uh, under the under the table kind of deal with people. He's a very sna or maybe manipulating a money system. But he does that, and right, I think they're directed to do this, George, and do that, George, from his higher ups. Yeah, and then they got us all down here reading this stupid shit that if you stopped it, we wouldn't miss it. People don't know that yet. I keep trying to tell them. This is the dork table. Okay? You don't get to the dork table because you didn't have an outside-the-box idea once or twice, Hansel. It doesn't make you human. It just means that even you are capable of being right twice a shift. 
See, and there you go. And we're told, I don't know, it could be anybody mental. It doesn't matter who it is. It matters what you read and how you process the information. What you're willing to do with that knowledge puts you in a wavelength, one or the other. And that's what it's designed for. That's why they do this to us all the time. It can't tell me that here we are at 20 and 18. And there isn't a group of people on an entire planet that know how to sit down with their neighbor and have a meal without getting into an argument that's worth bombing people over. So I find the whole fucking thing just ridiculously obvious. It's about money. <laughs> So they they got us all convinced that we need oil. <laughs> it's crap. You'd probably have to last six months without oil to have everything all back up and running under the new administration's version, which would be hemp. But the new administration ain't doesn't exist because we just got a, a bunch of game show hosts that work the same old fucking story over and over and over the same crap the same uh, same dialogues and the repetition of it you'd think it would expose it no it seems to make it more solid in the minds of the people that think they got a say in whether it happens or not so you don't have a say in what does happen you have a say in what does not happen and that's why we have implied consent and that's why we have all these fucking problems, so that people like me and Grimm and Rob Works will get the fuck out of the mainstream and let the mainstream take care of itself without our intervention, because we're a, we're dorks and nerds and weirdos, man. We're, we're not welcome at the cool kid table. And those cool kids, if they had to rely on the truth, they'd be sitting at a table alone. And everybody fucking knows it. And it's been exposed and we've been shown links and we have knowledge and all this happy ass shit but nine out of ten people are afraid to deal with the police i am i don't want nothing to do with them so don't do anything in your daily life that brings them to you it's an easy thing to do Thank you. I was enjoying one more sip of my delicious tea. Anyway, interaction with the with the man. Well, I've had it come and go over the over life, but I've had a lot less. The older I've gotten, the less you know, less I received. And now it's just <laughs> now if I stop the cops, they'd probably think I needed a, a <laughs> an ambulance needed to go to the hospital or something. But I don't, uh, I don't have any, I don't have any present day issues with law enforcement, and I base that on their decision to stay out of the smaller, you know, the smaller parts of the country and put their interests in the big parts where you know, if that's what you're doing, <coughs> and you're openly breaking laws and shit, well, there you go, but. I blame it on the population, too, so mm, I don't get a lot of people agreeing with me. Mm. And then for Cirque, for example, but then Cirque came from Copenhagen, so her normal state is to work in that city. So bringing her out of the city so far made a L.A. out of her. I made a Californian out of a Dane in eight months. Now she's commuting. <laughs> Yeah, she's over there commuting and getting headhunted at work and shit. So she's, you know, she's got a little something going on in her business life that's not boring, you know, it keeps her interested. So she's, uh, she's one of the more, I, people say fortunate, I call it comfortable. Uh, I think what I've learned about the society that this place is based on is they invest in their youth to produce a, a good adult And some of that, I, it's not so much school, but I guess you would acquire, yeah, you'd have to give the school the credit because she followed that educated course to go that way to a point. 
And then, you know, she, when she was tired of that, she got off it and went and got a job. So here she is. And she's been with the same place for a long time. And I thought she was not happy with the, you know, with where she was working. And so I sat back and I just kind of listened. I don't give her a lot of, you know, old guy advice. Oh, do this and oh, do that. I just, what are you going to do? And she works her, her uh, situations at work out all by herself. Which is how I try to, you know, in life, in person, I think I'd be more uh, leading that way to help somebody would be look at your, your, what you're already thinking is probably what you're going to do anyway. So asking me is, you're, you're not asking me anything. You're just listening to your answer <laughs> out loud. You know, a lot of us don't know that. We're not taught to recognize it that way. Shit, I know that. We're taught. If you want to know about yourself, look at this fella over here. And no, if you want to learn about yourself, grab a mirror. Everything you want to know is right there in that mirror. <laughs> and some people have a, I don't know, they have the ability to look beyond that and see other people and pass judgment on them for things that, do or do not i don't know how the things that we do this over affect each of us i think it's a big scam i I don't buy any of it i've gotten along with my neighbors for years we say hey we go on with our business we live next door to each other and the world spins regardless of what we do but here it's pretty quiet pretty quiet and boring old guy kind of (laughs) <laughs> in an old guy kind of way and i got um cartoons running in the background i don't know if that was audible on the show i don't think this mic's powerful enough to pick them up but cirque was napping over there and i didn't want to turn the tv off and you know then sit here and with silence to her from what her brain was hearing so anyway there's another dork moment <clears throat> that i had for Absolutely no particular reason. Hmm. What are they looking for? Um, planet shadow yesterday somewhere. I don't know. I saw the sun and the moon in the sky today at the same damn time again. And the moon had a shadow. So I'm a little concerned about what I'm seeing. And I don't know how to explain that to anybody. But if you're walking and the moon is in the sky and... To the right of that, or to the left of that, the sun is in the sky. There should be a full moon, if any moon at all should have the light of the sun. But I only saw a part of the moon, and I'm very confused. And this has happened, I don't know, a couple times over the last few months, where for whatever reason, I'm looking in the sky. Maybe I'm looking for Jesus or something. (laughs) I was out there on a hunt for Jesus, and I found the moon in the sky with the sun at the same time. And I don't know if it doesn't make see the way I understand the principle of light. This makes no sense. Why is they both there? But there's a shadow on the moon. But the whole thing's <laughs> help. So for whatever reason. My mind can't process certain shit that I'm seeing. I don't have to talk to people now. Now the world is just going to unfold all in front of me as the the con job I've always known it was. <laughs> you know, it's whatever people tell me always turns out to be a lot of crap. Okay, Beetle says there's two suns. Um, I don't know. I I just cannot explain what I freaking saw, and I know I saw it blind man or not i mean there's there's a limit to where my imagination will take me because i smoked a pipe load i'm not delusional yet we haven't got that uh, we have not hit the threshold of delusional well maybe according to a voter voters tend to think i see life from you know the wrong perspective if you would only see it my way and I try to explain to people that's the whole point. I'm not trying to get you to see my way. I'm trying to get you to recognize I don't want to see your way. <laughs> I don't I don't care what your way is. Just don't do any harm and the rest of it. But we live in this 
con- just destructive, critical fucking ball of anger. <laughs> and I don't know how people get through a day sometimes. But, hey, man. Anything could happen in life, you know. I learned for myself that anything can happen in life means I pick something to happen and then I do it. And boom, it's happened. All right. So then when you lower your expectations and you, you get your life into a, or an order or a fashion, you know, where it, it kind of runs like a clock instead of a, a, a motorcycle that, you know, it's leaking oil and needs an exhaust. <laughs> you know, that to something that's at least running smooth and quiet. And for some of us, that that lack of drama in life could be a big, uh, big problem. Because I think that when uh, I went from the real world to the electronic world, some part of my charisma that I have, I was still attracting crooked people like Kaz into my my uh, area, you know, to, to mess with, to interact. Let's use that word. Because if he would have asked, I would have said no. So he didn't ask. He just did shit. <laughs> And that's the freedom that part of me uh, lives with, you know. People are, because of the way we're raised, are going to do shitty shit. Well, as we evolve into this fucked up global society bullshit, we're running into nothing but trouble. And I know I say that, and I live in Denmark, and I don't speak the language, and blah, blah, blah. But the people that I encounter every day don't speak to me. So, I mean, most of them. So there's no problem in life at all with anyone until you verb, do a verbal exchange. There's the beginning of your, your problem. Well, why is it that uh, some places are more prone to be violent than others? I'd like to, I don't know about, why i just know that that exists i'm sure of it i can't prove it because i don't have my necessary research nope i don't have my verifiable facts oh lord i just have my experience with my fellow man to prove everything i say is true and then telling other people they gotta go you're out of your freaking mind dork nobody's like that and I think we're all, we all have the life that we, we're living it. So, like Cirque's stubborn streak about taking vitamin C and being all, you know, religious with powder, with, but being told, she, she likes, she's not a maintenance on the vitamin C. Me, I maintain it because I've been here for the winter a few times. <laughs> so I know it too. Uh, well, yeah, that's when, but that's what not what I like to do. I'm lazy. I don't like to tell people what. To, I don't like to tell people what time it is when they ask me. Hey, you got a clock? Uh, go get a watch yourself, you cheap bastard. What do I look like a Timex? But <laughs> see, it's the Jew in me, sir. It just comes out. I get all Jewy in ways that just they're weird. They're even weird to me. But my God. Vitamin C, just, I don't know, telling people what to do. I always put myself in that position and hear what I hear, and I don't do well with it. But I remember Beetle a couple weeks ago wasn't feeling too hot, and we were telling him, hey, take take a handful of vitamin C capsules. Take about 10,000 MGs. Do that like three times in a day, morning, noon, and night, you know, three times in one 24-hour period, and you'll feel a hundred percent the next day if that is indeed what is wrong with you of course because i'm not a doctor uh, ha, ha, but some things have symptoms that mimic other things Nah, there's another thing that really fascinates me is that the way this game that we play works is by simulating you know this worked on laboratory rats three out of four times hey why don't you come over to our place and we'll inoculate with some of this shit too and see what happens. 
<laughs> but what they tell you is, hey, we've been doing this for 20 years and we know exactly what's going to happen. And, hmm. Oh, Beetle says he just dropped 2,000 MGs of vitamin C with cranberry juice. 100%. Yeah. You can't overdose on vitamin C. Your body will, you're, you'll, you'll urinate it out because your body doesn't store it. But you live better if you use it as a additive. You know, I call them additives. I use rosehip. I use turmeric, baking soda, and vitamin C. So the, as I get older, the list grows. But the things that I'm using are natural. So they're easy to acquire. I don't have to worry about police intervention because I bought some turmeric. But, boy, try to get a little bit of weed <laughs> and see what happens. All of a sudden, then you go, hey, where's the weed department? There you go. You went and screwed up. Because here, it's not the people that are against the, the hash law. It's the government wants the drug money. So they're going to keep this thing alive as long as possible. But. Like I said, I've read there's rumor of a prohibition, about an end to the prohibition. Like Cirque says, if you treat it like a carrot, there you go. I mean, who gives a shit how many fucking carrots you got? Well, after a certain amount of carrots, yeah, people start to go, hey, wait a minute, this guy's got 50,000 carrots. And that's the point. That's where it would matter. And nobody would do that because we're not stupid and weird. That's the reflection of the society we get fed on TV and Internet, you know. Oh, you got to have 50 of these and preparation that, eh, preparation H. <laughs> I don't know. Dark Cakes is pushing colloidal silver. Now, the way I understand it, that's good for exterior but not to be taken internally. And I like my additives internally, by God and country. If I'm going to enjoy a powder, I want to put it in some food or maybe a glass of something and drink it, you know, like a normal person should. But we've got all this make-believe medicine from the Rockefellers. Yeah, and if you, like Mary, Mary's done her homework. She knows, boy, Mary's probably like a freaking expert on this medical shit because every week she'll make some comment or point about it and we've been duped by education and government to believe that this medical shit is all real and it's absolute rubbish and if you follow the road to pointing to the explanations of what it is at the end of it your answer is going to be this is a bunch of shit wow who how the hell did we fall for that, is what you're going to say. Mm. And the way that people did fall for it is because they undereducated us and made sure that we were told stories that were f to fit the crime that they were per per that they were perfecting. Let's not say perpetrating. Not. Let's say they were perfecting how to criminalize us. And here we are all these years later, and society proves it. Look at the mess society is in now. Split up in all these little groups. Everybody wants a cookie. The ones that don't want a cookie want a safe zone and a blanket. And then the other ones, they want guns so that they could protect their self from, I don't know what. I don't know what. The police, I suppose. <clears throat> anyway. So the, the changes that I've experienced in the last 10 years or so have uh, calmed me down compl com just totally. Nothing rocks. There's nothing to rock, so I don't look for it. I don't find it. Saying last week, I think, if uh, if I want to be reminded about how bad society is, I just think about it and, and follow my path and look, and I'll find exactly the behavior that I want to be reminded of I don't want to see. So I don't do that, you know. I think, hey, want to go down and do my trading and have a nice, nice stroll through the metropolis. And the weather's been fucked with badly over here too. It used to be colder, now it's warmer, uh, and I'm complaining. Well, because it's not natural 
Now, it might not be that abnormal because I haven't lived here that many years, but they might be setting, you know, like, well, it's been hotter than this in November, but not much, you know. So it could be in one of the one of those kind of zones, but seeing the moon and the sun in the sky at the same time, little things like that just kind of rock my uh, what would I even call it? My understanding of shit, you know, because I have one. It was taught to me, so I absolutely have one. I just don't agree with the one I was taught. <laughs> and then that, well, then, there you go. And then when I've got proof that. Whatever the hell it is, isn't what was represented. There's, You either get a complete uh-huh, or you get a complete, you're out of your fucking mind. Quit talking about that. <laughs> yeah, cakes, they're spraying here too in the sky. I see it. I seen it today when I was coming home. I don't know what they're spraying, but I would just venture to guess. It's, it's not as bad as where I'm from and it doesn't show as bad either they've just got you know see a few trails that lead up to and then spread over some time but who knows what it is I have no idea don't but I could find out if I wanted to I suppose hmm. but I'm not feeling any physical what do you call them um, ailments you know whatever's going on around me is Nothing is happening in the physical world that's bringing me physically down. If anything, I just get mental and call Hansel adult, and that's, that's about it. Everything else in life is very comfortable, but I still get a, um, what do you call it? I get insulted by uh, people that are rude to other people for no particular reason. You know, I think you should pick on somebody, pick on them by name. Go for the throat. Have some fun. You know, enjoy it. I mean, maybe not to the level that Apostle took it, but <clears throat> I tried being nice to him too, and that didn't work. Came back a second time. Then I wasn't nice, but you know, I I think that the record on the internet will show for itself, and the people that monitor whatever little bit of monitoring we do have done on this site if you're a complete dickwad somebody will notice and that's what happened is this guy was a dickwad and he got everybody's attention doing it and that was that there was no other door to use he was completely out of pocket now i don't hold hans to that level hans is just annoying no, no, no. He's rude and he's annoying, but he he's not not to that level. That's just uh if I convey that, that's just a personal thing cuz eh it brings the worst out of me to entertain my mind with that drivel and I'm still addicted to it like a dummy. Can't get over it. Yeah, I know they say I'll be affected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I understand that. I I do have my my side of affected i'm being physically affected i understand that from the gate talk about that constantly for years what but i don't let it go anywhere where i can see it taking control of me if that makes any sense you know i haven't gotten urges to you know go knock over a bank and run home to America and go support Donald Trump and all that kind of shit. So whatever they're spraying, it's not affecting my ability to make a decision. Oh yeah, I don't doubt it, Beetle. And they start with the food intake and the water supply. So we're getting fucked from every goddamn angle there is. And the majority of us do not want to accept that. That is, that sudden death. There's some level of their reality that just, it, it's like a, a suicide thing. You know, well, if I admit that everything's crap, then I lose. No, you win. That's how you win. By admitting that it's crap and trying to start over again and do something better. Mm. Mm. I'm enjoying my alkaline water that my uh, wife even got me one. She, I said, hey, you know what, I'm going to try that alkaline water. And the next thing I knew, she said, I, I just ordered you one so you could try it. And I use it two to four times a day. And I think that the whatever the filters, it, that it does something to the water, it's different. Mm. 
And even if it's all in my mind that's making me think that my mouth is enjoying this water differently than tap water, that's enough for me. So, because I'm easily amused and a dork. You know how easily dorks are amused, crying out loud. We just sit there and wait for somebody to tell us what to do all the time. I know there, yeah, mm, all the things that we know, and sadly, if you express it in a public uh, situation, you're going to get your ass handed to you by the group, you know, because the group's the one that's terrified of um, admitting that all the things that we talk about are real, you know, Christ, it would rock their life. And there's so much proof to the big things that are overwhelming. That when it goes down to shit like 9-11, and I'm starting to, to not even think of that as 9-11 so much as what it really was, was they knocked down the buildings to make way for the law change. See, without the buildings falling, they couldn't have done it. But the the ink was already dry on the law, so they had to use it. And that was the best they could do. So, because if they had to spend a few years thinking it through, I mean, it's obvious that Kennedy assassination was pure shit, make-believe, right? And they even sold it, the magic bullet. It went through Connolly, and it went through this, and it went through that, and it went to Mexico for a vacation, and it came back again, and then it then it blew his head off. <laughs> the, the ricochet bullet. <laughs> then uh, I see in the link that shows you the, they figured it, that it took about eight, eight or 12 guys, something like that. God, they're actually shooting at Kennedy from all kinds of different angles, and they finally got him from the sewer system, where the motorcycle cop's bike was parked. And hmm. I even saw a name on the link that explains who you're looking at. I this this stuff is, I don't know. Where do you go with it? No wonder people give up talking on the radio because. After a while, you just think, well, man, I haven't talked about this before, huh? Ooh. But I think what the real liberty media dot chat, it gives me the opportunity to do is like zero in on cakes. Because when I started talking about them spraying the sky, got his attention, you know. And he's posting there on the link, you know, and Beetle knows what he's talking about. Beetle's adding to his list. So, you know, that's two guys out there that this affected somehow because it brought it up. And Grimner's even commenting on it. So, you know, and Chloe's down there talking about food because she's not, on, she don't listen because I say fuck. <laughs> Apparently, if she listens on, you know, where her co-workers could hear it, it would be, you know. And it, that's what I mean about, wow, who who cares? Why would, it shouldn't matter whether I do or don't, but because it matters, I do. <laughs> if it didn't matter, why would I? Wouldn't, wouldn't serve a purpose. And people are all indoctrinated to believe swearing is a form of this and swearing is a form of that, and you do it now and you do it then because of these things and those things. And Man, doesn't anybody just believe in random fucking words coming out of somebody's mouth every now and again? If I had to believe that my man, my mind is quick, so I've, whatever, by the time it's come out of my mouth, I've thought it already. So, hmm. you know, it's like, fuck the speed of light. I want to travel at the speed of thought. <laughs> I'd be there before the thought. <laughs> there I am. Hey, look at Chloe's all liking Mr. Cakes and Mr. Beetle. That's kind of refreshing. See a little love chat in the reallibertymedia.com where the grown-ups are playing with live ammunition and borders. That's right. Fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> huh, Beetle. <laughs> he went on. <laughs> well, see, then this will open me up for Tuesday. I guess Rob uh, went to Austin last week. Missed my opportunity to do show with him had to do solo again and now i'm getting kind of used to this huh? this is doing this two hour talk to yourself about absolutely nothing and see what you can rile up in the real liberty 
Media.com chat. Okay, that's good enough. Because, you know, I've gotten to know these people over the years. And uh, it's important to... Hmm, it's important to be familiar with your surroundings. I think I think that's part of growing up. You know, if, if it was different every day, never knew what you were going to face, that would be chaos. So, hmm, I'd have to join the anarchists to live like that, honey. What do you think? Do you want to join the? Do you want? <laughs> do you want to be an anarchist with me instead? Ah. I don't think there's such a thing as an anarchist group. That's my opinion, though. Because the, the people that claim to be these groups, that's opposite of what anarchism is. Why would you join a group to be an anarchist? Because hmm. I'm part of the group at the reallibertymedia.com. But I abide by the rules of society. Not the rules of Grimner. We don't want to make Grim all crazy. Think he has to lead us to any place or any of that shit. But still, you you proved on your show last week, or the week before, um, that you got your limits with people. You're just not mean about it. You know, you're nice. And then if they're going to refuse you, then you're going to not be nice anymore. There's two doors. Pick one. And pick the wrong door you end up outside it <laughs> there, there you go oh frumpster's all about eating chili cheese beirudos from canada the land of the tortilla baby let me tell you no i get tortillas out here in denmark too so it's not like crying out loud people been um, baking breads for thousands and thousands of years and i wouldn't i wouldn't say that the Mexicans invented them or any of that shit. I wouldn't know who invented them. You didn't make anything. Man, the things we can do with food and stuff in this life is just incredible. You know, I could take a piece of glass and an etching tool and either just fuck that glass all up randomly and come out with a mess or put a picture on it and etch out the parts that bring out the this and the light goes to that and after a couple of weeks might have a nice shot you know but it's still destroying the surface of your of your project it's just some ways that you do destruction they give you back a, a finished product that you can keep and some acts of destruction just leave big holes and blech, whatever that would explain. I couldn't think of a word for blech. Uh, I guess the Jew came out of me. I'm having a Jew moment on the dork table. Ah! Somebody call me a doctor. I'm having a Jew moment on the dork table. Mm. Mm. I, I don't know what he wants to use coins for a chocolate. Oh, just buy a chocolate milk is what he's saying. Uh. Ah, is it really? Hmm. See, and again, I'm I'm outside of the group because I'm not real big fond of um, dairy products. I'll eat them. Oh, but I'm a big f um, fan of this. Thank you, sweetheart. You are the best. My sickly wife is taking care of me on the dork table program. That woman never quits, I'll tell you. Mm. But when she's ill, I take care of her, make sure she gets better so she doesn't stay that way. For if I haven't seen her ill for a whole day outside of the breaking the fingers uh, ever since we've been together. And they're debating the do's and don'ts of chocolate milk in case you're curious. The, the reallibertymedia.com chat. Hmm. Yeah, it's the dork table stuff, you know. Oh. Wow. Coughing in a life mic. <laughs> anyway, it was her. <laughs> it was her idea. <laughs> she made me do it. <laughs> now, that's one thing I don't. I don't really miss about the city is uh, the illusion of choice. I've slowly over the time. You know, because in a, in a store where you have canned everything or whatever, you know, you have more choices of shit 
to get. And then when you're in a small place like this, they can't afford to stock all the shelves with a bunch of garbage. They got to figure out what's going to make them money and what people are going to buy and keep it fresh and on and on like that. So I've I've gotten a taste for fresh baked breads. Oh boy, yeah. You go down, they bake them. I guess in the in the early morning, you know, and then boom, they're there, and they got these big rolls of fresh baked bread. Mm, because when uh, Cirque broke her fingers, kind of entered her baking. She hasn't baked for a while. I don't think she can knead the dough yet. Her poor fingers. It's all. It's almost been a year. But when you break anything that bad, it's going to just take forever for it to, um, not maybe not heal properly because the fingers are set and all that. And she can open and shut her hand, but there's still um, damage to the joints and shit and the cartilage. But she will not, well, maybe I should advise her instead of, you know, people say, well, just lead by example. And I lead by example and I still got to tell the wife to take vitamin C. And she sees me take that all the damn time, so... My example in physical life to other people, minimal. I don't associate with people that follow. <laughs> it's very strange. I'm so, you know, I got, I get in life exactly what I want. And sometimes it just doesn't seem that way, you know. But I prefer the kind of wife that can, you know, make her up her own mind and all that. But I forget sometimes that people like to be reminded of shit. Eh, it's easier. Eh, it's probably easier for me to handle it that way. You know, because I, I don't like telling people what to do. You would think I would. And at a time in life, I probably did. But nah, not so much no more. Now I'm more like, yeah, just leave me alone and I'll do things for myself. Except for Cirque. You know, everybody else I deal with, that. Eh. And when we have guests, um, they're very self-sufficient. In fact, we're going to have a party over here next week. So I'm going to try to do my show. I might have to go upstairs and do it on the Wi-Fi. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen at the moment. Could lug all my shit upstairs, but no, nah, then it would still be Wi-Fi. Ah, thank you, dear. Ah, you're welcome. Mm. She just came by with a new glass of elixir. And we're at the hour and 34. Then it's time to light up again. But we're at the hour and 34 minutes. And I'm two minutes fast, so you're at 32. Okay, so. Oh, no, no. My wife reminded me. I, I've been studying lately. And, uh, see, I'm a theoretical narcissist i'm studying the theory of narcissism and uh, with hopes to someday get beyond hedonist and you know assume the role in in life of a true narcissist but i'm i'm at this point in time on you know according to the document i'm only a theoretical narcissist and i don't qualify to the narcissist world I wouldn't be accepted by my peers as a fellow narcissist because I'm too busy fucking around having a good time. <laughs> and that's what not, not what narcissists do. They're very serious people. Have you ever met a narcissist that wasn't all serious? Please. Couldn't make a joke. Not even about their self. Not even about their cat. But hey. No, I guess I didn't, sir. But I just did. Yeah, but I've got ideas, man. You know that? I'm going to do things in life that other people only talk about. <coughs> and sadly, I, I've done most of that. So, wow, I'm running out of shit to do. What am, I think I'll just do art. What do you think? My This weird interest that I have in, in bizarre things. I'm going to do a few, uh, few things and evolve into the next you know that's the way my art mind seems to work as i do something and it leads me to the the project that that's cooking behind the, all the flames because <laughs> sometimes i don't know for a while it was like finding out about glass etching i met a guy in florida and he was uh, making this glass etching with a hands hand etcher and i i asked him about it 
and my interest brought him to bring me some plain glass and a, an, a hand etching tool of my own and he gave me an idea he says put a picture behind the glass and just work with that and see what you come up with so I did and I found out I was so interested in it but the etching part was uh, it wasn't I wasn't get the results that I wanted so I, I checked into this Dremel gun 15,000 RPM little gun and it had uh, silicone bits and silicone cuts glass really good and outside of the little bit of dust that it, it leaves I don't know how bad it is on lungs and all that kind of crap I, I didn't I wasn't like doing it for uh, you know, 20 years or anything but anyway still uh, well where what I was thinking about was uh, still the, like when I met the guy and he, he showed me the thing and, and I tried it and then that went to I wonder what I could do with a machine if I was doing this so hmm, I'm giving some consideration to uh, hitting up Rob Works and I want to build a generator on purpose that uses a 54 cycle don't know anything fucking more about it than what I want to do and I he took off out of town this week, so I didn't get a chance to have still yet had a chance to sit down with Rob and talk to him. But if he listens to the show, then he'll know what I'm talking about. And I still think he's probably patient enough to uh, get me going. And well, yeah, because what I did was I. I took the etching a step further and I started to add paint. And then after that, then I'd paint, I'd etch out a cartoon. I'd paint in the dark parts, whatever color appropriate. And sp uh, whatever I finished, I'd spray paint over that with a, a flat color. And it, it looked like, um, you know, if you ever walked into a, a marble tiled bathroom in a fancy, fancy hotel, it gave off that kind of finish. It was real rich and expensive looking. <laughs> and there were cartoons or names or people's, whatever they wanted. I told them, you, you bring me a picture and, and I'll figure out a way to get a form of that picture on the glass. And got, a, got myself a little reputation doing that. But, you know, I didn't pursue that for very long I just did it because I liked it and, and I think making money off the art it didn't make me want to continue and, and experiment more I was getting kind of stuck so I would stopped doing it and went and did something different boy those days were <clears throat> I have tried so many things to make money and I can't think of any way there is to make money that will fail if you just go do it so it's not really a matter of luck. It's a matter of thinking. You got to plan a strategy or something and, and approach a thing and have a goal. And when I gave all that up, <laughs> I've, I kind of found out that life will come at you no matter what you do, as long as you're not you know, dodging it. Like when I was in Scotland, I was just dodging life completely, taking care of mom. And at the till about the end, about the last six months, when the, when she was getting more ill and they had more nurses and more people seeing her daily, I was I started to feel in the way about that. So we discussed it, and yeah, it was time for me to have my own thing. And now I got it, and I'm trying to figure out a way on the dork table maybe to explain to other people how I interpret what happened, because. Uh, you know, you got your own life to live. And if you're bound to uh, other things, like me, I was bound to my mom. That was my priority at the time. Even though it wasn't, I mean, it, it had been for so long, I just kept accepting something I wasn't doing. You know, it was like, uh, I was beyond helping her. So, but... Now, now that she's gone, I, at least I, I got that opportunity in, in my adult life to go take care of my mom, you know, and uh, I don't think that happens to everybody where 
the person that brought them into the world kicking and screaming and, you know, being a pain in the ass got to return the favor in, in their old days and, and do it back for them. And it wasn't completely like she was helpless, but um, she would, like, enjoy it when I would make the tea for her, stuff like that. She always insisted on cooking. She didn't like my cooking. <laughs> we are not going to have any of that in this house no <laughs> she knew me <laughs> so but uh mm. but up to the end it was uh i don't know my brother got a hold of her for the last last six months and he, and he so we both got to to do something with mom before she went and but not dad so outside of going to visit there was you know there was no uh um, end of days with pop i missed i missed the uh about the last 10 i suppose what was it i seen him last in 90 now is in 90s 96 i was in scotland i think and i didn't go back again until 11 so yeah he didn't see me for almost 20 15 but we chitter chattered on the phone a few times over the years usually very briefly and that till the very end and and he started to he started to understand what I was what I was seeing and how I was seeing all this shit that I was telling him I see and he came from a different completely different kind of world and I don't think until the end when he took the time off to stop working that he could finally understand why I'd been so against what he'd been doing and uh he did so here we are, you know, whatever the hell that means. But he was a, a homeowner for a lot, a lot of years. And at the end, my mom finally talked him into stop buying houses. It's too much work to take care of, blah, 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 blah. And got him in, into a, a small city and where there was close to, they were close to everything that they needed. So he, he went out, you know, I guess he went out okay like that. I I don't know. I didn't get to be there in time, so I I've got my own ideas, I suppose. You know, it's like on the internet, you read a bunch of type, and you've got your own opinions about the other guy. You know, ah, this guy's a communist, and that guy's a Republican, and this guy's a Democrat. And I don't think any of that really matters, but it matters to the person saying it. Christ, I tease people about politics. I don't give two flying shits what side of this mess you're on we're all getting fucked at the same time and on top of it the reason we're doing it the reason it's happening is because a well an overwhelming population supports it thinking it's freedom they've got their they've got their wires all jacked up and messed with and their sources of information are just terrible fox news i see fox news links on rlm wow if that isn't enough to knock you off your chair i don't know what is but i don't open them but if your mind thinks that other people need to open this fox cnn crap they shove down the uh you know the anti tv set crowd because we're internet people. We don't watch that kind of shit in the first place. <laughs> so, unless you're a television watcher, what are you doing paying attention to Fox? It's a joke. Oh, they're talking about smoking in public. Oh, some people, man. Grow up. It's, it's a big world. Go live where people don't smoke. I mean, it's not hard. Go where it's cold, real, real fucking cold, like 12 degrees. And you know what you won't find? People standing around smoking. <laughs> they might be inside smoking, but they won't be outside. So what you do, avoid their smoke by going outside. Turn the tables, you know. Quit pushing people out of um, comfort because something makes you uncomfortable. If it's that bad, deal with it some way, you know. Jesus Christ. There's got to be groups of people that could organize. Ah, we don't want any smoking here. But why to do it to all of us that don't agree with you? It's just selfish and 
it's that selfish Rockefeller, I'm going to live forever because I take the right pill stupidity in a nutshell. Jesus Christ. I mean, smoking, not smoking, vaping, non vaping. Look at the water source. Why don't you have a analyze your water party and test it for shit and see what's in it. See what it tests positive for. I wonder how much those kind of kits cost. Anybody know anything about that? Has any experience with testing water for... Maybe um, Woody might know. Woody's in all that kind of weird outdoor shit. Hmm. <clears throat> but, you know, if, if it's all because you're so worried about other people's lungs, if you drive a car, you you drive around in this car, right? What people have never thought about studying out and putting out in the open is while that engine's running in front of you and all that shit's blowing, it's putting it right in the in the car. You're breathing the exhaust fumes from the engine block. Whatever that shit does create, you're there. <laughs> so, add a pack of cigarettes to that or not, it. I don't see any damn difference. You're fooling yourself. Mm. I will save that for an imperfect world on Tuesday. <laughs> Not imperfect. I was kidding. But you got the point. Anyway, we're almost to the end of the provocative Dork Table podcast. And I'm glad I announced to everybody that I am now on the road. I'm a, I'm a th- you know. I'm going to be a theoretical narcissist. And when I master that, then I will become a true narcissist. I wonder what that's going to feel like. <laughs> Cuz I'll learn it, you know, you do the robe and, you know, the dead skull. You got to make sure the moon's full. The very important part of graduating narcissism school is if the moon's full and your robe ain't black, you ain't going any fucking wear sport. Back up. To the back of the line with you. <laughs> and probably didn't translate, but I gave it a try. <clears throat> now, uh, why don't you have to vote? Why don't you have to register to vote in the United States? Here's a good qu- question for voters, right? You don't have to register to vote in the first place. You can just go vote. But did you know that there's laws that say if you're a convicted felon, you can't vote? Well, who's going to stop you from voting? There's no there's no registration to vote. <laughs> so what what does this only apply to people in prison? <laughs> or does that mean that if if you voted and you got arrested for something, then they got you as a voter and a registered voter? Well, wait a minute. It doesn't make any sense. They don't register anybody in the first place. So why can't you vote? (laughs) I'm a convicted felon. So what? You don't have to register. Well, they said I can't vote if if I'm a convicted felon. Oh. (laughs) I love this game. (laughs) I wish I would have thought about it. Hey, Moose. Moose came in just late enough. Moose girl at the... RealLibertyMedia.com Just in time to catch a goodbye and a hello on the dark table. She's probably sharpening her claws for the trivia game tomorrow. If she's around, ah. Yeah, you type fast, too. You know a lot of that trivial shit. I mean, the the stuff that we all know is, wow, four guys get the right thing, and only one was fast enough to beat the other three. <laughs> I like small, fun games like that, though. I'm kind of a dork. Oy, that's why I started the dork. T- I think I started the dork table because the cool kids are just, oy, God. They're, they're, wow. I can't even find words to describe my disappointment with the cool kids today. Mm. They all need uh, safe zones and bibs and overalls and, don't say that. Don't say this. What's the sweater read? I don't. I don't even know if it exists. Could be a bunch of shit for all I know. And it's just crap I'm reading on the internet. But there's supposedly like millions 
I would assume by the way they talk about it, millions of people out there can just completely have no idea about how many genders of human um, life there is. They got it. They've got it narrowed down to 28, but I, I think there's like two. And variations from from the theme of two, but still two. You know, it's like when you go see a big, what would you call a den of bears? Hmm. That's about as far as my uh, identifying character would it go. I wouldn't go, well, that bear looks gay, but that bear, no, he don't look gay. He looks like he probably uses the girls' room. No, I just see a group of bears. That would be the end of that. But you get into a group of people, and all of a sudden, uh, apparently, according to the interweb, all these new groups have just emerged over the last 20 years. Didn't even exist. I mean, when they did exist, they were called Nazis or hippies or weirdos. You know how people throw names at shit that it doesn't even apply to it, but it'll identify it to a weaker mind. Ah! <laughs> that was a dork joke, folks. Dork joke. Moose don't have claws, Flash somebody. Just hoops. Wow. You know, either claw or hoove is going to leave a really bad mark. Grim, I don't want to deal with either of those. No, I'm going to pass. Nobody. I hope Dork Cakes is playing. Mm. Well, that's what I read, uh, Miss Kate. No ID to vote. Why do you have to register? I don't get it. it see, it's just a logic question, not a law question. But they tell you one thing, and then the results. Where, where does all this shit come from? People telling us shit. And I don't know where to draw the line with it anymore. Ooh, I'm not involved. That's what I mean by effect. It doesn't affect me. It might affect the quality of the shit that I buy on a level I cannot enter entertain. It's not it's out beyond me. I'm a guest in a foreign country. I can't go out into the street and demand a better source of electricity. Are you kidding? They'd have me sent home for disturbing their little, you know, little place. So there you go. And that's the way all of us are. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And I hope you have a good, I hope everybody has a good laugh at the dark table. You know, this was never meant to be, a, you know, I'm informing you about shit. This is just me talking shit for a couple hours. Maybe I'll come up with a joke or a story that reminds you of something you did yourself, you know, because some of us are over 50, man, and, uh, we got a lot of years back there that, and your conscious level of memory, I don't see remembering, but perhaps you're better at memory than me, so I don't know. But my level of memory is, I have to pinpoint and think about something. It just doesn't constantly flash in my mind about all these things I've done for the last 50 odd years. But when I think about something I've done, I, I still have the ability to remember, yep, I sure as hell did that. And some of the things I did just go against society. You know, they're they're not popular amongst my uh what financial I guess my financial peers in life, you know. Because wealthy people truly do not give a shit about nothing. That's why they're wealthy. <laughs> if they cared they'd do something about something. That's not why you get wealthy. You get wealthy to have things you don't need. That's what wealth is. It's not good for anybody except the holder. And that's popular. So long as it's popular, we're just going to keep doing it. And mm, if you hold that thought, that brings us to another completed, almost, Dork Table podcast on the reallibertymedia.com. And thanks a lot, Grim, and um, for putting up my show. He puts it up all kinds of places. I got I get it on BitChute because I listen back to see what the hell did I just say for two hours. Because when I'm doing it, I'm just talking shit. I have no idea what's going to come out next. Anyway, so uh, 
I'm going to be leaving here soon, but I will be replaced in the morning by Grimnir and his blues addiction. And I'm telling you, the guy, he's hooked. If you want to know what day it is, go to the RLM. And if they're playing blues, it's Sunday. And it's early Sunday in New Mexico. <laughs> Maybe not where you're at, but it's definitely, and it rolls into our little game of trivia that we play weekly. On Sundays, come on down to the Real Liberty Media Chat. If you're a brainiac and you like useless, trivial facts about the world as we do or do not understand it, <laughs> that's the place to do it for me. I, I get a giggle out of it. And then after that, we got Hal Anthony behind the woodshed whipping our ass about being crickets because as a collective i am a cricket so i understand his um, his side of that but when you figure it out for yourself whatever that is to you it's good to have uh people like hal anthony out there doing links so that we can hey wait a minute this doesn't seem right what can i do about that and I think that's what he's doing, is make himself available in the future, because people are not desperate yet, so that that'll be a reality in the not so distant future. And then on, well, we got nothing going on until Tuesday. I come back with, hopefully, with Rob Works. Now, me and Vinny started in a perfect world, where we debate what it would be like in a perfect world. And then... Vinny made it perfect by leaving <laughs> and giving me the show to do by myself. So Rob, <laughs> he came along and he went, hey, I'll do a show with you. And then last week something came up, so I had a solo. I would like to do the show with somebody else on In a Perfect World Tuesday. If Rob's not available, uh, let me know and we'll do the connection on Skype and do a show. And then... On Wednesday, we'll have Miss Mary on her rocket chair, live from Kansas, flying about, telling us all what's good and what's not good and such. That's why I took your last show. Woo. Boy, you're an authoritarian sometimes. Woo. She lives the by the whip. <laughs> hey, that's the way I see Miss Mary. I can see her however well I like. And she's probably the best in, uh, internet friend I got. But we've been separated by work and, um, I don't know, life. Life takes you where it is. This is what I mean. You don't always choose your road. Your, your road chooses you and you do it. So anyway, Wednesday night with the Rocket Chair podcast. And then uh, she comes back again on Friday. Whoa! The Friday night show. Miss Mary on a rocket chair flying around. Then after that, then you got Grimnir and Moose Girl doing the Freakers Ball. And if Moose Girl doesn't show up because she's got a life, then Grimnir will usually do balls to the floor. Uh, balls to the wall. <laughs> ah, at that time I didn't mean to say that. I really did. I meant to say it right. And it, oh, I'm a bad guy. <laughs> I just got one of those six cents of humor. Anyway, so that wraps up the dork table, and I'll see you guys later. Sirenara. <laughs>